Welcome back to Leaving Cert 2018. This is the higher level paper, question B1, and this was a perspective projection question. So the image on the right shows the new two pool bag incinerator in Dublin. Figure B1, so here's figure B1, shows the plan and elevation of a similar structure. A pictorial view of the structure is also shown, so here's our pictorial view. Part A, we want to draw the given plan and make a perspective drawing of the structure given the following. Our spectator is S, or here's our spectator S is going to be 20 metres from corner A. So 20 metres, let's just slip down and we have a scale layer of 1 as the 200. Okay, I've converted all of these already, okay, and you can go about converting that yourself. But the simple way of doing it is we've got 10 metres. Okay, when I've converted that, uh, I ended up finding out that it was 50, so basically I halved 10 and added a zero, okay, or moved the decimal point. So for 3 meters I halved it, which is 1.5, and I moved the decimal point, which gives me 15. But you can convert those in your own time. The picture plane passes through corner A, so picture plane is going to be going through corner A there. The horizon line is 10 meters above the ground line, so that's going to be 50 mil, and the sloping lines on surface B are inclined at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal plane. So these sloping, this sloping surface here, and that sloping line, that sloping line, they're all at 20 degrees. We use an auxiliary vanishing point to determine the sloping lines on surface B in the perspective drawing, so we need an auxiliary vanishing point. So we'll start off by drawing the given plan. Okay, so we want to draw this plan using our correct scale. I'm going to put point A just about here. Okay, so there's a 30 degree line there from A. I'll just draw that lightly for now. And then 80 degrees for that um, line, we're going to have the other side of the incinerator. So following that around to 80. Okay, the overall uh, depth there of the incinerator, you have 14 meters, which is 70 for the smaller section, and 20 meters, which is 100 for the larger section. So just go at six degrees there back. Just to find I'll get it somewhere over here, just to find my position. Okay, so that's giving me my back corner there. I can now measure my 15 mil, my 50 mil, and my 15 again. Fifteen, fifty, so that's sixty-five, plus another fifteen is eighty. Just, you can see there's a center line there as well, so I'm gonna show my center line also. Okay, I'll put this side in heavy. Okay, and um, I need to find this side here as well, which will be 80 degrees. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. Right, is that symbol here showing that my sides are parallel? So from my three there, I'm going to draw a parallel line. Ok, 
Okay, and I know it's going to be 14 meters or 70 millimeters back to the front of that uh, part of the insulator. find this opposite corner and um, a couple ways of doing it but the quick way is this is a center line so whatever the distance is from there to there I can just mirror it across or use axial symmetry to find that. So axial symmetry on the opposite side. last point that I marked 80 away, you slide in set squares to draw my parallel line as I finish off the outline of my incinerator. Line. Okay, so that's my plan view completed. Now we need to find the spectator S, which is 20 meters, so 100 millimeters from corner A. And we can see that's vertically down. So I'm going to draw a line vertically down and measure away 100 mil. So that's going to give me my spectator S. And my ground line and horizon line I will deal with in a moment okay picture plane passes through corner A so my picture plane is going right through this corner it'll be somewhere here right so now to find the picture plane we need to join the outermost points or edges outermost edges of our plan view I'm going to bisect that angle that's created So that's my bisecting angle, and now I want to do the final picture plane, which will be at 90 degrees to that. So the sliding set squares, 90 degrees to the bisecting line. Okay, so that's a plan view of my picture plane. And while I have my picture plane, I'm going to find my vanishing points. Okay. So the vanishing points are going to be parallel to the side, okay, because that's the side I'm going to be vanishing back. Parallel to that side, I go from S. Okay, so that finds me my VP1. VP1. And parallel to this side, which is actually 30 degrees. degrees come back a bit from S so that's my VP2 and this is the picture plane okay and uh, now I'm just gonna turn my page so that I can use my uh, set square as the horizontal edge in line with my picture plane So my picture plane now is in line with my horizontal plane, or along with my picture plane. So down here, let's look at the question again. So my picture plane passes through corner eight. My horizon line is 10 meters above the ground line. So 10 meters, that's going to be 50 millimeters. Okay. So 
anywhere down here, just give myself enough space. Should be plenty of space there. There's my ground line. I'm 50 millimeters above that. Is my horizon line. So horizon line, ground line. Okay. Um, and my VP1 and VP2 will bring them down onto my horizon line. like this, a lot of marks go for the setup of it, okay, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get as far as here, okay, it's pretty straightforward for every question. Um, sloping surfaces, okay, we don't need to worry about them just yet. So let's deal with the base first of all, let's find my front edge here and uh, my base edges running back along. Okay, so where my object, or where my edge comes through the picture plane to hit the spectator, I'm going to project that vertically down. The same here, where it's coming through the opposite side, project that down. Okay, my uh, part or my corner A is resting on the picture plane, so that height that we're trying to find that's going to be a true height, which we have here, five meters or so twenty-five millimeters. I'm going to project down my corner A. That's where it hits the ground line, so I can measure a true height, because it's resting in the pitch plane, true height of 25 millimeters. Okay, I'll draw that in heavy. So that's A. And I can vanish those lines back for the base. it back in the opposite direction. And then I can actually vanish this front edge's a horizontal line. So I can vanish that also back. vanish uh, this line back horizontally because we know it's sloping at an angle of 20 degrees in reality. Okay, so that's going to be sloping back. It's not going to go into my VP1 or VP2. So we need to use an auxiliary vanishing point in order to find that angle. So auxiliary, my auxiliary construction is either going to be on my left or my right. Okay, it's always on the side where, if you imagine, if you were standing here looking at your shape, this is the side you would see the angle at. Looking in from here, th those lines would be you know, sloping away from you, and uh, you wouldn't see that true angle. So, <coughs> on this side, I'm going to do my construction for the auxiliary. So I need a 90 degree triangle. So from my vanishing point, back to VP1, from my spectator back to VP1. I'm going to create a 90 degree angle. So essentially imagine a small triangle, okay, and it's rotating down, rotating down, and that's going to find us the height that we need for our auxiliary. So let's draw that triangle. It's a 20 degree triangle, 20 degree slopes. So that is my right angle triangle. Okay. 
and this is the height that I'm going to use for my auxiliary. So, it's my auxiliary height for an angle of 25, 20 degrees. Get that height. I'm going to step it up from V put P1. So that will allow me to vanish back. Actually, right auxiliary VP. So it's found that side. Um, I also want to find um, vanishing points or a, a, my sloping line back here. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit different. Okay, and um, my line running from spectator to vanishing point one is parallel to that surface. Okay, or to that edge. Okay, I'm trying to find this surface, which is not parallel to that same edge. So I'm actually going to have to draw a line <coughs> that's parallel to this edge from my spectator okay, until it hits my picture plane. Let's do that. This, is a, this hasn't come up before in the leaving cert. Okay, it's kind of a tricky one with that could be here. Parallel to this edge. Okay, and actually it's exactly 20 degrees. So that would be a vanishing point for that. Okay, you know what to do? Our triangle again, a right angle triangle. There. Okay, I'll actually call this VP3, even though we won't use that as a vanishing point. Okay, and I'm going to measure my 20 degree angle again. Triangle, okay, and this is the height then to my auxiliary. So I need to find that vanishing point VP3 down here, which is going to be on my XY line. Okay, we call this auxiliary vanishing point number one. And then this height from there to there. step up above my VP3. So we'll call that auxiliary VP, we call it 3 just so it corresponds with that. And now I can use that to vanish back and find my back edge. Okay, so that was kind of a tricky one, a second auxiliary for the same angle. Now that back edge of my incinerator is a horizontal line so that can go back to VP2. <coughs> okay, so that's the base of the incinerator completed. Okay, and um, I'm just going to pause the video and add a little colour just to correspond with what I've done before moving on to my, uh, I suppose, the top surface or top element of this. Okay, so here it is our two uh, triangles that we rotate down for our auxiliaries. Uh, first one there for 20 degrees. Write that in 20 degrees, okay, and that's our 
H1 that's found on our 90 degree triangle and that's H1 stepped off. You can just about see it there in green and use for that edge. Then our second one which is parallel right, to find our VP3 that's parallel to this edge here. Okay, it's a 20 degree triangle again. That found us our height H2 for our height to be carried up. We'll use that for our back edge. Okay, so that might be a little bit clearer on the drawing now. What we want to do at this point is, as I said, complete the top surface. So let's start bringing back points to my spectator and dropping them down into my drawing. Okay, so where they hit the spectator or where they hit the picture plane, we can drop them down. Okay. Lines are going to be in these positions coming down. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference line on that surface. Okay, so something like that. And once I find that reference line, then on my um, on my edge here, I can bring that back down through the spectator or to the spectator through the picture frame. So, yes. show that line. And bring it back down to your spectator. Where did the picture plane drop that down? And that's the position of it there on that edge. Okay, and um, that's a horizontal line. You can see here it's a horizontal line. So I can send that back to my VP2. I should just show it here so it's going to finish. Okay, so that's my reference line. And that will allow me then to this horizontal edge from the this little bit and then I'm going back to my auxiliary vanishing point from that part. Okay, uh, finally then I need to find this front edge Okay, so this edge here. We have the overall height of the object, so I'm going to take a reference line to use as a height line. So actually, I'm going to extend down from here, creating a reference plane. So that hits the picture plane and drop that down. And the overall height of my shape was 15 meters, which is 75 millimeters. So height of 75 millimeters. Measure that up. I'm going to vanish that back to my BP2 because it's a horizontal line. Okay, and where that intersects, okay, I have my front edge. Okay, I also have my back edge, which is my side edge there, and I can draw that from the face, because they're all at that height that I brought down, 75. 
Okay, I'm even writing 75 there so you can see it. Okay. Lastly, we have this edge and this edge to find. This is the horizontal edge, so I can send it back to the BP1. Okay, and where it intersects this line coming down, that will find that back edge. And to finish off, go over heavy on back surface, or back edge there. Okay, so that is the surface, or sorry, the perspective drawing of my um, incinerator. Okay, so part B. A vertical chimney is located in position C, so position C here. It has a height of 20 meters. Draw the chimney in perspective view. So let's locate the chimney in plan first. So I'll extend on. There, and it's 5 meters, so 25 millimeters. Right here, that is our chimney C. Okay, now let's find this in or on our picture plane. Where right, is the picture plane? So, extend it on back to my spectator where it hits the picture plane. Drop that down. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere along here. Okay, I know the bottom of it will be in line with on that plane. So I would be able to find the bottom just by extending this line on here. That should find the bottom. Okay, but I'm going to need to find the top of it as well. So what I'm going to do is give us the height of it for a reason. Locate the height. I sorry, the height is 20 meters. So that's 10. 100 millimeters. Okay, so I am going to create another height line similar to what I did for finding this front edge. So extend that, create a reference plane, bring that down until I hit my ground line. Okay, so that's a point view of a height line that we want to be obtaining. The height, the actual height, we can draw here because that's it located on the picture plane. So that's a true height. And I can draw in my height then of 100 millimeters. That's the height of my chimney. All right, 100 there, just to show. And I'll vanish that back to BP. And also vanish back from here to VP2. Yeah, and we can see that that passes through that corner that I was talking about earlier. So here is my chimney coming down. So that's going to sit right in there. Part B completed. Then determine the angle of, of elevation when viewing the top of the chimney from point S. Okay, so angle of elevation when viewing the chimney from the top from point S. Okay, so point S is in line with the horizontal line. Okay? So that, that's point S there. So we want to find the angle. So looking up like that, that angle going up to the top of the chimney. Okay? My spectator is in line with the horizontal plane or the, the horizon line. Okay, so if I was to locate my spectator down here, it would be on the horizon line there. Okay? So, I'm just going to do a little sketch to help us here. 
from a spectator is somewhere like this. Okay, and it's at a height of 50. And we're trying to find and use a little bit of colour here to show. So we are trying to find the angle that's created looking down to there. Now the height of this is 100, okay, and here is a height of 50. So if I was to draw a triangle to find the angle of elevation, that is going to be 50 there. Okay, it's going to be halfway up. So that the triangle that I'm going to be drawing here, yeah, is going to be a right angle triangle. It's going to be 50 high, and that will allow me to find that angle. So let's go with that. So here is an edge view. Looking down on top, if I was to imagine that that's it there, that's my angle, or that's my triangle that I'm trying to find. It's a right angle triangle. So this is very similar to uh, what we'll be doing for our auxiliary. Okay, so that's our right angle triangle. Write that in. Right angle triangle. Okay, we said that the height of one side there, if it's 50 and 50, so that's going to be the height of 50 for that triangle. So I'm going to measure 50 there for my triangle. Okay, and we're going to write this in just to show that's a distance of 50, so it's clear for you. Okay, and the angle then that they're looking for off of this, let's draw it in yellow or in orange just so you can see it clear as well. That's the angle that I'm looking for. So measure that. That's an angle of, I've got it at kind of between 14 and 15 degrees. I'll call it 15 degrees. last bit of that and before I finish any of these questions I always just check that I've got all the all the lines, all the details in heavy, everything going there. And if you want to if you have extra time at the end of the exam add any little notes like I have just to make life easier on the exam. If you want them to fly through correcting it, they'll be happy doing that. Okay, so that was the solution there to the twenty eighteen question B one.